welcome to the Strong Opinion Hibs podcast. Uh, I'm finally back after a wee hiatus. Uh, been busy with working that. Uh, good to be back with the boys. How are you both? How are you, Jack? How are you, Charlie? I'm good, mate. Um, I've been busy today because obviously the wee fan volunteering opportunity um, at Easter Road are now helping get the stadium ready for next season. Loads of cleaning work and weeding and everything like that. So I was busy doing some jet washing of the turnstiles and helping get old advertising boards out and weeding and everything like that. So uh, it's been a busy day, but it's been good fun to uh, help out the club and get to play with the jet wash. That's quite a fun thing to do. But I, so um, I fair enjoyed it and giving something back to the club. And I've got to say, if you are available at any point this week, just uh, inform Kieran Power the fan rep and there'll be a job for you. Um, so get your hands dirty and help the club out, eh? Uh, you can come round the lab back garden if you want once you're finished, Jack. <laughs> uh, that's ten ninety nine, mate. <laughs> and how are you, Charlie? I know, bad mate. Are yourself? Uh, I'm good. I'm doing alright. It's nice to be back. Like I've missed you, say. Uh, I've missed doing it. Like it's been good, but it's been good to have a wee break. Um, and it was really good actually to like watch just as a fan. Like I genuinely look forward to it coming out each week and like listen to it on my commute to work and back and forth. And that or just putting about the who's day and all jobs. And I thought you used to absolutely smashed it, like. Thought you've done really, really well, especially with like the uh, the tier makers and that. I thought that was brilliant. I thought you've done just the content you've delivered was really good. And obviously your interview um, with Cliff was good as well. Really, really good, Charlie. I enjoyed that, mate. Right, so good. let's get started with the rebuild then. Uh, the rebuild at Hibs is already underway. And that starts with the backroom staff that Lee Johnson's brought in. So obviously Lee Johnson's appointed the manager. He's brought alongside him uh, Jimmy McAllister as an assistant ma- manager. Adam Owen is also another assistant manager. Me, manager. And then you've got David Cray, uh, David Gray continuing as the first team coach. What's your thoughts on that sort of backroom staff being finalised? Uh, just a quick quick thoughts on that because it's been news for a while now. It's good to see uh, two assistants. I think that's different. Um, mm. One of them is actually. Ah, you, you, see, you see that more in American sport. And down south as well, I think. Um, nah, I think it's good. I think it's obviously something different. We've not had that before. Um, obviously, Maloney, the previous manager, had a massive backroom staff, whereas Lee Johnson's operating with two in the same job and David Gray, and probably a goalkeeping coach as well, I would imagine. But um, no, I think it's good. Adam Owen's a, an interesting one. He's got a good CV. Mm. Obviously, was at Rangers before they died. Um, when they got to the UEFA Cup final back in 2008, and then obviously was on the coaching staff for Wales when they got to the semis of the Euros in 2016. So he's um, he's obviously been there and done that. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to see how he sort of brings that experience to Hibs. And uh, Jamie McAllister as well, he's worked with Lee before, so he'll know what he likes as a manager um, and sort of the style of football that he wants to implement. So I think, you know, I'm excited and obviously... Sir David speaks for himself really, eh? so nah, it's mm. good, good, good to see that it's finally finalised and can move on after that. And Jack, yourself, what's your thoughts, mate? Yeah, I'm really happy. With it. Obviously, you've got a uh, McAllister as Lee's assistant, which I think's great. You know, they've worked with, together before; they know each other. Um, and I think they know what they expect from each other as well. I think with Sean Maloney, his backroom staff are very sort of cobbled together. Um, there's some really random guys, obviously Valerio Zudas, who didn't exactly endear himself with the fans after the semi-final either. And then there was you know, Caldwell, who's, you know, it's one of these things, a bit like Marma, you either like him or you don't. Um, mm. And I think, you know, it was just a bit of a ragtag bunch, if you see what I mean. They didn't really work together before, and it, it just felt all very sort of cobbled together. Whilst with Lee Johnson, obviously, it's very been carefully thought through. You've got the two assistants, like Charlie says, that's the done thing down south in an American sport, having sort of two assistant managers, which I think is really good. It, it means that you've got two assistants that will be working on different things, and it, it gives Lee more time to sort of focus on the key issues and he can sort of delegate things to the two assistants. And then I think it's great that David's staying on because he's got the makings of a good coach. Um, mm. I think in terms of a goalkeeping coach, I think, you know, it, obviously David Mitchell sort of became our goalkeeping coach um, as part of that sort of temporary backroom team we had when David Gray became the interim coach again. So maybe David will stay on in that role. We don't know because he's doing his badge as well as David Mitchell. So it'd be good to see David Mitchell stay on because he's a nice guy and he's also got like a wealth of experience within the Scottish game as, as well. So it'd be nice to see Mitchell maybe stay on in that um, goalkeeping coach role. But I overall, I'm very happy with the backroom staff. I think it's an exciting backroom staff. 
Mm-hmm. One of the things that I think a lot of people have put, uh, picked out, just very similar to you, obviously, um, Adam Owen, or Owen Adam, whatever way it is, he comes with sort of a, a, a decent pedigree and background, um, especially in Europe and spent a wee bit of time in America as well. Looks good. Oh, um, the one that seems to have caused maybe a little bit of controversy amongst the supporters is the fact that David Gray's staying on. I've seen quite a few people disappointed with the way that Gray maybe led the team or his tactics and things like that. Um. If you can hear noise in the background here, it's because the dog's going off his head running back and forth, so just to ignore him, we've calmed in a minute. But no, uh, David Gray was um, one that sort of, people weren't really that enamoured with at the end of the season. Is that how you particularly felt towards him, or do you think he done as well as he could be sort of a bad bunch, or what was your thoughts on David Gray and then him staying on? Look, I'm going to use a vulgar term, you've got to piss the cock you've got, and that's what David Gray did, you know, I think... He, he, he was he was he was doing the best that what he could you know and, and they, they were meaningless games as well and he, he's like a brand new he, he's been foisted it been it been foisted on him twice and when you're that early on in your coach bear in mind at the start of that season he'd retired and only had just started coaching you know when that's foisted on you especially the mess the club was in at the time it's no and, and to judge him off of I definitely I don't envisage David Gray being a manager per se I think he'll maybe be more of an assistant or a defensive coach or something like that, but I'm happy he's staying because I think he's got that respect as well. Bear in mind, for some of these players, he was their captain for a long time, so mm-hmm. he's got that respect, and I think it's good to have a figure that's a well-known face around the club for a new manager as well. So in time, David might step back and a new coach comes in or whatever, but I think initially it's good to have that well-known face that's respected by the players as a club legend in there and that can assist you and you'll know, sort of familiarise Lee Johnson with the club because David Gray knows everything there is to know about him right now probably. So I think it is good to have that sort of friendly face if you like there. I definitely think it will help. So I'm, I've not got any problems with David staying on and I think people that do, I can understand where they're coming from but at the end of the day it's not really a big deal. It's not going to affect Lee Johnson day to day I don't think. Charlie, what was your thoughts, mate? Um, I think it put to bed the idea of him being Hibs manager. You know, um, I think the good thing was he won the game against St Mirren because it never put us in any real danger. But um, I, I think, I think he needs to go somewhere else to start his management career. I hope it's not going to be another Sean Maloney one um, where Hibs is his first manager job because he might, he might lose that legend status he's got. Um, but no, I'm glad he's, I'm glad he's staying on. I think. Um, Lee Johnson said it when he when he spoke to us, Calvin. Um, he's got that experience of playing for the club captain in the club. You know, obviously helped us lift the Scottish Cup as well. So you know, I think that experience will play into his hand. Um, and I, th- yeah, he's like Jack said, he's only been retired a year. So I'm glad he's not been chipped out the door because mm-hmm. it would be a shame for him to be manager against probably know what he wanted to do twice um to then be like nah you've but didn't want you to stay around you know i'm glad i'm glad he's been offered a job to stay yeah i kind of understand the sentiment thing as well that people might think oh he's only there because he scored the goal in the cup final on that but i think he has got a lot of leadership qualities in that and to be honest with you like there's worse people to hover in the club than david gray i think he's a really good ambassador for the club but i don't think his football was necessarily that bad i think like <sighs> He changed it when the fans wanted to change it. We wanted to see two up top, and he put two up top. Do you know what I mean? It was something that we've been crying out for Maloney and that to do for quite a while. So he came in, he, he sort of gave the fans what they wanted. He put two up top. We had Melkerson up there, and we had um, uh, James Scott. And to be honest with you, it didn't really make much made a difference. So I didn't really think that, like, like Jack, Jack's expression says it all, um, to be on the piss with the cork you've got. And unfortunately, I think you've tried, and he got a wee bit... Uh, a bit of blowback for the win there, uh, so I think he had a wee bit uh, uh, a a tough a tough two two really sort of tough positions to put him in, and the fact that he took it and he you know he done done the best he could with it, uh, I think he still certainly got a lot to learn, but uh, I think he's got a lot to give to the club as well. So that's we look at the backroom staff. Let's have a quick look at some of the players that we've actually went ahead and signed or added this year, um, and then players that have been released, guys. So. A uh, list of players here that I've got that we've signed to date. Uh, feel free to add to some of them because I wrote this up a, uh, a day or two ago. Uh, David Marshall. Everyone happy with Marshall? Yep. Yes. Very. Uh, starter, isn't he? Aye, number one Aye, keeper for me. Aye, number one keeper. I think he's going to be the best 
probably, you know, um, he's the type of keeper that will probably win, you know, win you a couple games a season, uh, save you at least two goals a match. I mean, looking at Gordon for Hearts this year, um, he's without him. I I think I don't think they're as comfortable in third place as they probably would be. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I think he'll be able to bring that sort of aspect to Hibs as well. Uh, and maybe just give the defence a wee bit more confidence as well that the guy behind them has got a clue about what's going on. Uh, it's my sort of thoughts. Um, did you guys have any? Yeah, um, I think basically the point of Marshall, I think Marshall is going to be our Gordon. You know, big experienced mm. goalkeeper. Obviously he's getting on a bit, but he's got that experience at international level. He's been around the block in terms of where he's played. You know, he's come in with all that experience and he's going to sort of help us because, I mean, look at it, Hearts had a, a bit like us, Hearts had a run of having bad keepers, if you remember, like Pereira and Zlama and everything like that. They, they were, were they were fantastic, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, they're fantastic for us. If you're looking at it from the uh, Maroon point of view, you probably know, but I think, you know, Hearts had a run of quite god-awful keepers and then Craig Gordon comes in and I agree with you. If it wasn't for Craig Gordon, Hearts wouldn't have been sitting pretty in third like they did, you know, I, I think. Yeah. Gordon definitely saved a space. I think Levy, that game against Levy's one I picked out. Gordon, I mean, look at that one where it was the Levy player had blasted it for some distance out, and it's like something you you got to go. That's unsavable, and Gordon somehow manages to tip it over the bar. So I definitely think Marshall's going to have that effect on us. The thing is, it's mm-hmm. leadership as well. Like Marshall, he's very vocal. You've seen it like how he was going mental when he saved the penalty um, in Belgrade. So I think you're going to get that passion from him as well, and that's what we need. I think Mark Macy wasn't that communicative and he wasn't really that passionate. He sort of he was a bit of a doer figure, Matt Macy. He was a good Scottish word there, to be honest. And I think we've had a run in okay, okay, take Marciano out of it and Conrad because Conrad Logan's a hero obviously. We've had a run of sort of average goalkeepers. Yeah. You know, I think Hibs and goalkeepers don't really go well because you, you look at the likes of Macalambe and everything, you know, we, we've we've had some shockers in the past. So I think it's good that we've got this big experienced keeper in and uh, I think he is going to do a good job for us, Marshall, and I definitely think he's going to save us a few points and win us a few games this season. Yeah, I like the fact he's a bit of an old head as well. Like That experience is really good, I think. I think it's something we sort of lacked throughout the team last year. Um, and no, I think I think he'll be a, quite good to develop Dabrowski as well. He'll be quite a good mentor for Dabrowski, so I'm looking forward to seeing what Marshall can bring. I think it's a good statement of intent as well. I don't know if it's necessarily Lee Johnson signing because I've seen different reports elsewhere that this is one that Maloney had lined up um, before he departed. So um, if anybody who's listening has any news on that, please send it my way because I'm not entirely sure. Um, this is one that's stirred a wee bit controversy, guys. Uh, no one, Kenna, Kenny, leads leads sort of a... a, 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 a that name there, Charlie Buffin. <laughs> no, um, no, I, I'm just smiling because... I'm about to say something controversial. Oh dear! Oh, it's that. It's that we. It's that we look at Glee as when he's going to throw a grenade. Ah, yeah, of course, I. Well, um, nineteen-year-old sort of um hot pro, uh, prospect from Leeds United. What's your thoughts on that guy? I'll let Charlie go first because I want to, I really want to um, get the titillation of the controversy. So it's, con- it's controversial in a good way. Um, oh, oh, how boring! Like on you. Go. I I think. I think no and Kenna will be the player that we've been missing in the midfield since Marvin Bartley left. I think um Exactly. I think having seen a few reports, uh, Leeds fans having watched some highlights of um having used them on football manager, um I know you can't base anything on that, but I think he'll be quality for us. I think he will start. I don't think Lee Johnson's bringing him right. in to play him off the bench. He's certainly not an option for the development team either. So I think um I think he's going to be that number six in the middle of the park we've really really missed um mm-hmm. so i i think it's controversial in a good way because i'm i'm very positive for a change for, about a signing who do you think comes out the team to accommodate him then because it looks like sort of doyle hayes was doing that sort of sit back in front of the back four sort of bartley role last year for me take any um, take any jake doyle hayes josh campbell or jake or uh, joe newell out of the team he goes in mm-hmm. i think probably it's probably josh campbell's replacement i think because um, I think they are very similar in terms of well, Josh Campbell against the big they teams. Similar, similar, Christ. <laughs> well, no, I mean in terms of the in the big games, Josh Campbell's their main main job is to noise up the opposition, and yeah. I think Ken will do that against any team. I don't think it's going to be a big game player. I think I think he'll start week in week out, um, and I think he'll do well. Yeah, I've got to agree. I I think he's going to be that sort of 
Bartley hatchet man figure that um, he's a bit of a boogie man in the midfield. You know, he's a player. He's a player that opposition know when they come up against him, he's going to cause them problems. He's going to get in their faces. You know, and lead. I was speaking to this with a couple of guys at the uh, Easter Road today when we were on a break that. Leeds are a club that have got this culture of being physical and, you know, you're all dirty Leeds and they're a very physical side, they're a very mean side. And he, if he's in that culture, he knows he's got to put his body on the line, he's got to fight for every ball. And I think that's the sort of thing we've been missing. You know, Jake Doyle Hayes and Josh uh, Josh Campbell outside the, like, the big games, but Jake Doyle Hayes in particular just seem to be passengers in midfield or they, they tend to sort of... Wince, wince away for the sort of physicality of it. I think there's points where Jake Doyle he just gets bullied, you know, and I don't think Noan Ken is going to get bullied. I think he's a boy that's going to come in and do the bullying, and we needed that. And I genuinely think he's going to be like another Marvin Bartley type of figure where he is our big physical anchor in the midfield that's going to protect the back four. We've needed that. I think obviously we tried it with Gogic. Gogic wasn't particularly great. I think this boy has the ability to back up. Gorgic literally threw his weight about and was an average footballer at best. I think this boy's got the sort of ability to back it up as well, which is what you need. You can be a big physical presence, but you've got to have a bit of football and ability to back it up as well. And I think this boy's got that. I'm really excited about him. And of course, Leeds fans were saying very positive things. And a few Leeds fans that had actually watched him during the 20 season, the Premier League being everything, were saying, you know, he's, he's a really good player. So I think that's good. And I think maybe people are looking at his age and going, well, is he, is he going to be a development signing? Is he... I'm going to start. I think he will, and I think this is the whole thing. I think there's going to be an ethos around the club. This is just my impression. This is purely me speculating. I think there's going to be an ethos of striking a balance between experience and also youth. And I think a boy like that is a a, a very decent prospect, and he's got this sort of hype to. And this isn't like Melkerson hype, where like a few folk go, "Oh, Melkerson is going to be really good." I think this is hype that is justified, and it's. It could go down the Nathan Wood route right enough, but at the same time, I don't think so because I, I definitely know him. Kenny's got the sort of ability to back it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think my I think my thought was, again, when I seen it, I thought Christ, another nineteen year old. I just didn't think that was. I think I just think that age the age thing for me is a big one because it just shows you like a lot of lack of experience throughout the squad, and I thought that was massive last year, and I think. We didn't get the balance right last year. I thought it was just the, the squad was too young. I think it was the youngest squad in the league. And I think it just showed at times the lack of experience and what to do when you go a goal down. It didn't look like anybody knew. You know, it was like once we went a goal down, I thought we were beat. Um, and I, I feel like I, I'm still not convinced. Uh, I'll, no, I'll not really pass comment until I see him play, to be honest with you, because that's something I'm sort of learning as I get older is that yeah, I can sit here and talk all, all I want, but I've never seen I've never seen the guy play. I've never checked out any of his highlights of that, so I don't know how good or bad he's going to be. But I give him the benefit of the doubt. I'd be surprised if he was a starter. Um, but then again, I don't know if I don't really know what the what the sort of signing process is that Hibs have got at the moment. It seems like we've lost Charlie. Um, I'm sure he'll join us again, Jack. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, manage to dive back in. Well, that gives me a chance to um, sort of. Uh, pick up on what you've said mate and I, I do I, I think I can see where folk are coming from after the whole youth thing like we've got boys like Del Ferrier and Runa Hauga and it's like you didn't see much of them And but yeah. I think this is more of a calcul- I think this is more of a calculated one he's a boy that right. I think clearly is very well respected by Leeds fans now you, you want to get in Buddha Glimt or the team that Melkerson was on loan at fans you know, coming on and saying wow he's brilliant or like you didn't get standard Liege fans coming on and saying Diaferri is brilliant. And I think that's is the difference in Noan Kenny. Yes, he's young, but I think he's got the ability to back up. I think, you know, the word wonder kid gets thrown about a lot, but I definitely think this boy's got that sort of in him. And I think I'm happy if we sign youth like that. If we go and get some random boy at the back of in Norway that nobody really knows anything about, I go, okay, wait a minute here. But I definitely think, like, you know, Leeds are a big club. Leeds are a big club and they've got a decent academy system as well. So... Mm. I definitely think that uh, helps. Just to sort of add on what you're saying, it kind of, it kind of, I don't know. It's an interesting one because 19 year old. I mean, is there is there anybody in our youth academy that could have maybe made that step instead? Just playing devil's advocate. Do you know what I mean? It's like that, I do get where you're coming from on that, mate. And I, I think that's another frustrating one for the mm-hmm. fans. Is is he depriving a lad in the academy of a chance? But but if he's good enough, he can play. Exactly, and the other one is I, I keep saying this, and I, I, I banged this drum a few times. The women's team, my folks, said, "Oh, Rosie Livingston, 15. Why is she getting given a chance to the first team?" 
is if you're if you're if you're good enough, you're old enough. It's as simple as that. If you're good enough, you're old enough. I think any player, no matter how young or old they are, deserves a chance. So that, that's my sort of view on it, mate. So let's move on to the next one, which is Rocky Bashiri then. So Rocky Bashiri um, left and then came, wait, 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 Big Chaz is back. You're right, mate. He's back. Hello, my my computer is being weird, so I'm back on uh, my no, phone. No worries, mate. You're just in time. Uh, we're just coming on to Rocky Bashiri, who's re-signed. That's a good um, one. So Rocky Bashiri, uh, the club announced that a list of loan signings or people who were with us on loan had returned to their club, including Jasper. Uh, but Rocky Bashiri was on that list. And a week later, it seems like Rocky Bashiri signed a three-year deal. So what's our thoughts on Rocky Bashiri coming back? I mean, to be brutally honest, I, I don't really have anything. Obviously, I think our hand was forced because we had that clause that if we played a certain amount of times we had to take him. I mean, I'm obviously not getting like the technicalities of this right, but that's the long and short of it. And mm-hmm. I think obviously hands been forced, but I say I was saying to Charlie before we started recording that I think as much as that's happened, Lee Johnson could easily go, well, I don't want him, punt him down into the development team or release him. You know, I, I g- genuinely, I think, you know, that was within Lee Johnson's power to do that. But I think Rocky coming in, he, he, he's a useful player to have around. Now, yes, he was the root cause of some of our problems. Although, he started off well. Before the wheels came off under Maloney, I think Rocky actually started off quite well. And then the problem yeah. started when the problems in general started for him as a player. Like I, I, there was a few, at t- I think that performance at Tynecast put a lot of people off him. If you're going to put in like a lacklustre performance in a derby, of course the fans are going to turn against you. I mean, as mm-hmm. much as I'm Mr. Positivity usually, even I've got to say, if you're putting in a performance like that in a derby, you really didn't get what it means to be a Hibs player. What about his performance in the first derby, though, Jack? Because I was I did, that, that's what I was going to come on to that, yeah. actually. Yeah, I thought his performance... That's the 0-0 was, sorry, at Easter Road, mate. Yeah, the Easter Road derby, I thought he was... Uh, the 0-0 Easter Road, I thought he was one of our best players in the pitch that night. And I think it, but I think Tynecastle's got a little bit of edge to it because it's going to their place and winning. It's beating them on the, their own, in their own backyard. So I think... Sometimes time ca- winning at Tyne Castle can be slightly more important than winning at home. I think just coming to the pettiness element, coming into it, that, that's for me. I always love a win at Tyne Castle. I mean, I know we didn't experience them bit that often, but um, I think the thing is, with Rocky, yes, he's put a lot of the fans off, but I think he, there's a footballer in there, and I think Sean Maloney was the wrong man to coach him, if you see it in that. Because Sean Maloney was an experienced coach himself. You get a, a, you, you, you bear in mind, Rocky's only 21. He's a young lad. He's, he's got a lot of potential, I think. You bring him in, experienced coach like Lee Johnson, I think Lee Johnson will bring the best out of him. Seriously. I, I will see another Rocky that we didn't see last season. And I think he'll, even if he plays as a backup or he only plays a few games, I definitely think he's a useful player to have around the squad. He'll be a useful squad player. And he's also he can also do a job. And there was a few games where I think he was decent for us. So mm-hmm. it's no one I'm particularly pleased about, but it's one I'm going to embrace. I definitely think that Rocky can offer something to us and that Lee Johnson will bring out maybe a better side of him than Sean mm-hmm. Maloney did. Charlie, any thoughts, mate? Uh, I know you can't see me because my I don't know what's going on with my... So I'm going to keep my camera off um, and try and fix it. But I, in terms of Rocky, um, I was a bit confused when he signed permanently. I was a bit almost mm-hmm. annoyed as well because I don't actually think there's a player there. Um, right. I know that's going to going against what Jack just said, but I I wasn't overly impressed by him after the mm-hmm. after the first two games. I think. There was obviously talk that Maloney said he can't play more than two games, which is just talk. Like it's no, there's nothing in that. But you know, and then he played every other game, and I don't, didn't he think he had a good game after maybe Motherwell away um, mm-hmm. in January. I think you know, and that might be to do with the continual chopping and changing in the back line as well. Like Hanlon was out, Porteous was out. He was played next to Stevens in some games. Played, you know. So I don't think there was enough consistency there. But I was, I just wasn't a fan. But I'm willing to give him a chance. Um, I'm willing to see maybe up until January if he's if he is playing well, then all's forgiven. But I'm mm. just not convinced that Lee Johnson actually wants him. I think it's maybe just a we have to sign him because we need to sign yeah. him sort of idea. 
Yeah, and I think I think that's where the issue lies for a lot of people. The fact that they obviously said he's away and then he's back. It doesn't look good for behind the scenes. Um, I think the thing is for me with Rocky is I think do you know what like he's obviously young and I think he's got a lot to learn. I think he's a decent centre back. I think he's probably a decent centre back for the level of league that the SPL is. Maybe not pushing for top three in the SPL, but I think he's a decent SPL centre back. I think that. My biggest issue is that it's quite difficult to criticise him because I didn't think anybody had a particularly good season last year. Although our defence record was really good, third best defence in the league, out, well, first best outside the old firm, uh, God knows how, to be honest with you, from what I was watching. But for me, I feel like um, it's quite shan or no really, I don't really think it gives a good true representation to sort of single him out and say, oh, he was really bad, so we shouldn't be signing him because... I don't think Hanlon was particularly great. I think Portia, Portia was awesome, but he let us down at times with his discipline and things like that. Um, so I think to single him out because he was he was a, he was a he was a pretty poor player and a poor team. Um, so I want to give him another chance under the new regime and see what he can what he can do. And I think Maloney sort of three at the back exposed him a lot of the time. Mm. I don't think he maybe played that system that much. Um, and I think it really showed his weaknesses. Uh, so I think he'd be. I wouldn't mind bringing him on, or if you had to, you know, sub in for the last twenty minutes, or if you had to, um, you know, start the odd game or something like that, give someone a rest. I don't think he's he's, he's the worst option you could have. I've certainly had worse in the past. Yeah. Um, the other thing you've got, sorry to jump in there, Calvin, but I think the other thing you've got, remember with Rocky, and is he was nursing, he was playing through an injury as well. He was nursing an injury. I think a lot of folk forget that he was he was playing through an injury at points as well. Um. Which I think may be affected as well, but I agree with you. I think that struck a chord to me about he, he was a scapegoat. I think it, he'll go back to being the scapegoat the minute things go wrong. But nobody in that team really got pass marks on me last season at all because nobody yeah. particularly covered themselves in glory. I think it's like you said, wrong to start singling individual players out, especially a boy that was only here for like half a season. So yeah, I, I definitely I agree. I definitely agree yeah. with what you were saying. That sort of struck a chord to me there. So we'll quickly move on. Sorry, mate. Charlie saying something? Oh, no, I think it might just be delay. All right, no worries, mate. Um, I've got Paul McGinn as well. Paul McGinn, obviously, uh, triggered his one-year extension. I think he's decent to have it in around the squad. He's obviously the um, the vice captain. Um, and then the Australian boy uh, that we've recently signed as well. What's your thoughts on the Australian boy? I think... Out the players that we've signed that recently, because obviously we, I know we'll probably go into Mohamedou Bojang as well, but mm-hmm. out the Australian boy, I think out the two is the more exciting one. This boy looks like a brilliant player. Um, you know, he's done well in the A League with Central Coast Mariners, who are a sort of decent side in Australia. And obviously, the last, let's be honest, we love an Australian player at Ibs, uh, uh, McLaren and Boyle. We do love an Australian player at Ibs, and they, they tend to do well for us as well. Um, I definitely think this lad is going to be a good player for us next season. He, he's come in, and that's it. I think he's put. What I say is, if we're bringing in players from other countries, if they've proven themselves at a top level in their own, I think the the A League isn't obviously of spectacular quality. I, I think we've maybe got to accept that it, it's not the top league in the world. But I think Australia does create a lot of good footballers, and a lot of good footballers do go to Australia or come out of Australia. And I, I definitely think this boy's got a lot of potential. You read about him, I've watched um, Central Coast Mariners highlights and seen some of what he's done. And mm-hmm. he looks like a really exciting player. I mean, I definitely think he's going to be like, a key part of the team next season. I definitely think he's going to make a difference. So, yeah, overall, I think I'm really excited about him. Out the two we announced sort of recently. And, and I know he's sort of younger as well, but I think, I think he's got he's the, he's got he's the got international experience to back it up as well. Because obviously he's been capped. Um, by Australia at various youth levels, which is good because Australia are a decent country. You got to remember they're sort of like the powerhouses in Asia, next to Japan and South Korea. Australia are the best country in the Asian sort of football, if you like. I know Australia is not at part of like Oce- it's Oceania, but they play in the Asian FA. And I think he- Australia are one of the top countries, and the Australian youth teams always do well at like all the youth cups in Asia and everything. And being part of that system again is only going to count. Um, towards his experience as well. So overall, it's, he's a signing I'm very excited about. Mm. Charlie? 
Um, I'm excited um, about Lewis Muller. I think um, he was voted right back of the season in the league, so that's obviously ideal. Um, and we're a bit we're unsure if Harry Clark's staying or not. So to have another option in that position's good. Um, I, I, you know, obviously I don't I don't follow the Australian league at all, so I've next to no idea much about him. But um, nah, I think I'm. Yeah, I'm really excited about the idea of signing a, a young right back because, you know, we've got Cadden, we've got McGinn and we've got uh, Miller as well. And if we have Clark, there's four. I don't know if we need four options at right back, but um, yeah. aye, no, I'm excited. So, and then obviously uh, we signed the Gambian striker. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name. I'm going to do Bojang. Yeah, he's Bojang. Uh, what's your thoughts on this again, guys, this, 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 this signing? It's a random one. <laughs> Very, yeah. I, I, I don't know anything about him. I don't know anything about the team he's come from. I don't know. Ian Gordon must have the Gambian league loaded up on his football manager save to find him because there is nothing, there's nothing about him online anywhere, really. But, you know, players like Drogba and Manny and, you know, the African sort of powerhouses, yeah. if you will, they, they started off over there. Um, Mm-hmm. And I like the idea that we've got the option to buy him as well. I think that's that's good. That's probably it's probably worth maybe thinking for the future there. But um, nah, I think listen, we'll only give him a chance. Um, it can't be any worse than what we've had. So um, hopefully he produces the goals because we need we you know we need our striker until Nisbet's back. Who knows if Doyle just staying as well? So nah, I think it's a decent option to have. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean. I'm going to put my neck on the line here and say I'm actually quite excited about him. Um, Africa as a footballing market is continuously growing and like Charlie picked up on there, we were talking about it before we started recording again, that Manny came out of nowhere and Mets, that was his first team in Europe, we're like, who the hell is this boy? And then look at look at where Manny is now. So, uh, Golo Conte as well, he sort of, even though he declared for France, he did start off in an African country. Um and then you've got Condogbia, who was obviously good for Valencia a few seasons back. Africa is a treasure trove of fantastic players. And I watch, because you can watch the African Champions League um, free on YouTube through the African FA. And I've watched some of these clubs. I've never seen a Gambian team, I've got to admit. But I think you look at it, and it is a very exciting, growing product, African football. And I think Bojang, he's coming. Rainbow FC seem to be one of the sort of top teams in Gambia. He was on loan at a Portuguese team's youth side as well. He did well with them. Um, and I think overall, it's good that the club are looking in different markets. You could do, you do the usual old boring thing of, well, there's a player that banged in a few goals for the, your Kilmarnock or whatever next season. Let's get him into the team. And I think it comes back to you, if we sign St Mirren players, you get St Mirren results. Well, Rainbow FC do well in Gambia, so we don't get Rainbow FC results. But I, I think... But to be serious for a minute, I, I definitely think that this guy's got potential. He's a big guy as well. We've been needing that sort of physical presence up front as well. He's quite a big guy. And mm. from what I've seen, he's also quite fast. He's also quite versatile. He's quite mobile as well. And of course, I took a load of stick off folk on Twitter. You, you can who he is and everything like that. So, well, it's because I do a bit of research. You know, I, I mean, I didn't sit and go, oh, shiny, shiny, Premier League. But, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think... This boy is a decent player, and I think it's wrong that folk are writing him off before he's really even mm. started. He's, I think you've got to make a judgment of a player who kicks the ball. I'm going to say this now, and I, 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 I would say a player that I wasn't too sure about when we first signed them was when we first got Paul McGinn. I was like, ah, he was all right for St Mirren, but is he going to be good enough for him? And I think Paul McGinn's been like a trusty servant um, at sort of um, fullback. So I think Bojan could be the exact same, and I definitely think the boy's got potential. And I'm actually really excited to see what he can do. And hopefully he starts banging the goals away for us and there's really well. And hopefully we can start singing that Gambia song to the tune of Waka Waka. I know. I love that. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the biggest concern for me is um, he's only scored six goals in the last three years. Bear in mind, so, he's not hardly been played. And I, I, I think there's a lot of data missing as well because Gambia is a poor country in Africa. And they won't like be, you know, there won't be many folk like watching the league in that. So mm. what I would say is as much as like, and also he's, you've got to be, like, he's not had any like prof, prof, top professional experience. So I think stats with players like that 
can be deceiving, and that can go both ways. They can either this, they can either flatter to deceive how good they are, or they can yeah. sort of paint them in a bad light, and they're no good. And then they turn out to be a good player. I mean, an example I'll use with that is with the women's team. You know, like there was hardly anything on Alexa when she first came in, and then she was brilliant. So I think when it's a player coming for like a college system, like you get in America or a youth system or a league. And one of the, like I said, Gambia is like in the top 10 poorest countries in the world. You know, if they're coming from those sorts of places, you're not going to instantly have like big data on that. So I would say on that, I wouldn't really trust the stats too much. I'm, I'm just basing it purely off of what I know about African football, which it is a growing and exciting product and hopefully he's part of it. I think my, my main concern with it is the fact that it is very much left field. And like I said earlier, like I don't really want to jump in and pretend I know all about him or Ken, uh, no, and Kenny or anyone like that, like because I've never heard of these players before, and I think the signing policy for me is I think Hibs were because that sort of brings us to the end of the signing signings that we've had there. I think Hibs were at their best when they were signing young, hungry Scottish talent, and what I mean like that is you look back to the season when we were sex, uh, successful, we had McGinn, McGeoch, Scott Allen, Martin Boyle, Jason Cummins, like uh, Fraser Fivey, um. I probably missed a few in there as well, but that's when I thought we had some like success and some like really good players. And I, I've seen this type of signing policy before, where we sign like people from like League One or League Two or like Championship, and then sort of ra- random ones like this as well. Like okay, we've had like some of the folk we've had in the past from like League One and things like that, like uh, Mark Milligan or our Championship or um, Tom Tyle, things like that. Like they come to Easter Road and they think it's going to be they think it's going to be easy and it's almost like they've got a misrepresentation of what it's like because I feel like they really struggle when they come up and it takes them a year or two to settle. And even at that, when people like that in the past have settled, they haven't really hit the heights that we'd maybe hoped for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I'm quite wary over this sort of period that we went signing. However, on the other hand, there are some success stories. If you look at the likes of uh, uh, Malonga, I had no idea who Malonga was when he signed. Um, another player that came from sort of African descent and he was brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He was really good, really athletic, really good. Got the club, uh, quite quiet, went about his business. Um, so it kind of works into it. He doesn't care that, about the Rangers. Exactly. Make sure he gets the word then there as well. I like that. <laughs> but for me, I just feel like the, the signing policy is a bit, str- it's been a bit strange. Um, yeah. No. I just feel like signing, I don't know, I feel like that's when we've been at our best. Yeah. I get what you're saying, mate. Obviously, because I'm a bit of a football hipster, eh? <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Because I'm a bit, because I, I like football's an international game, and I think it's like as much as it's great signing like young, hungry talent from your own country, that only gets you so far. I think it's good to, be, like I said, it's good to be looking at different countries, different places, different ideals, different styles of football to sort of bring it all together. Mm-hmm. And I'd love us to go and sign like good young Scottish players, absolutely, because I think it's good to grow the Scottish game and promote the Scottish game. But at the same time, if this is a young African lad that somewhere down the line could be a star, then, you know, I'd want to give that boy his start and give that boy his chance. So I think it's all about the fact that football's an international game, it's growing and it's good to, like I said, get different ideas and everything like that. And I think Hibs, we a club that have always been innovators. You got what I mean? Our whole start as a club was bringing two communities together. It was showing people in Scotland that young Irish working class men weren't just drunk, um, violent, you know, layabouts. It was all about like breaking down those barriers and yeah. battling xenophobia in Scotland. And I think it's good that as a club we're innovating and pushing forward. And so I don't see you know Rangers or Hearts or Celtic signing players. So again, I look, I, I, it's a, maybe it, like you said it could be like Costa Coglu signing these Japanese boys. Everybody said oh my and I'm like they're going to be crap in Scotland. And then they're coming and being tearing tear the gaff up. So I think definitely it's all about that. But like I said, it, it does feed into the club boy and innovation. So we were the first British team to play under floodlights and everything like that. So. Mm-hmm. We were the first British team to have a live televised game as well. We were the first British team to play in Europe. So I definitely think there's a lot that we innovate on, and it's great that we're coming into these new markets and everything as well. Right. Now, this is probably me just being my usual uh, happy clapper self, as some people like to call me. But um, I definitely I definitely tend to take it more positive. Like I said, I, I love it when we look at different marks because it sets off the um, pedantry, and I, I love like looking into players and everything like that. So... Yeah, it's personally one I'm very excited about, and I'll shut up now because people will be getting fed up with me. 
All right. We'll move on to. Uh, did you get to put your two pence in there, Charlie? I can't even mind. About what? So what was the question? About the the Gambian boy we've signed. Aye, aye. I'm not. I've just slabbered such a load of crap that Charlie. That's all right. I am. Like no, I said, no, no. I don't know anything about him, so I can't really comment. As sort yeah, of the, just the what I said. That's fair enough, mate. Right, we'll go on to just some players that have been released then, and uh, we'll talk about one or two of them. We might do a part two to this because I know we're we a wee bit tight for time wise, and there's a lot to get through still. But um, so players that we've let go: Alex Gogic. Sean Mackey, Jamie Murphy, Dre Wright, Scott Allen, Sylvester Jasper, and James Scott. Now, the question is to you, is there anybody on that list that surprises you? No. Not really. <laughs> not at no. all. Not in the slightest. No, not at the all. The only one for me is maybe Jasper. I don't think Jasper was as bad as, you know, I think we've had worse. I thought Jasper was all right. I think the yeah. problem is, is all right's not good enough for what we need in that position because I think that's it we're quite toothless in attack last season I think for me yeah. Jasper had, and I've said this numerous times the folk have watched the beer makers is Jasper's a player that I'd like to describe as all fart and knee jobby because he's got the skills and he's got that direct but he's not got an end product it you know if he'd scored a few goals I would have went yes let's keep him I think the problem was he was doing all these skills and he was because Boyle had the skill Boyle had the player but he could also score. Kavanagh, she yeah. had the skill, she had the player, she could also score. Jasper just didn't have that end product, and for me, that was a frustrating thing. And other times, he was doing what I like to call, some a little move I like to call the Florian Camberry, or the crap Albanian striker, where, or the Albanian donkey, or whatever you want to call him, where you do about a million stepovers and then just get sat on your ass by their massive centre-half. Because that's what happens in Scottish football. Sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and he can get made to look quite silly. There's a few times where Jasper did get made to look quite... Levy, I, Levy when he came on, he Obelage bullied him. Like, seriously. Ob- yeah. Obelage made him look stupid. So, I think the thing is, is he's not the sort of player for me that we really could be doing with. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's sad. I would have liked to have seen Jasper. At the same time, I don't think he was really all that. I liked him, but I didn't like him enough to say he was worthy of signing on again. So there wasn't any big surprises. I mean, it got guys like Gogic and that, I mean, they weren't good enough for him, really, were they? No. I think um, Scott Allen, for me, obviously, uh, was a really big fan of Scott Allen. And I feel like, um, yeah, he was our, our highest assister last year with four assists, um, even though he only played about four or five games. So I think that sort of speaks for uh, the sort of capability Scott Allen could bring to the squad. But moving on, um, I wanted to have a quick look at the squad as a whole. Uh, and I don't know how we're doing for time wise. Do you want to make this a two part episode? Nah, just get it done in one no, if we can. Get out the road, eh? I'm just watching for Jackie because I know time wise he said he was he, he was having a bounce, but um right. We can condense so, it. We'll just get what we need to get and then we can be Right, so uh, in terms of players that need to leave, looking at the goalkeepers, uh, we're going to do looking at the squad, seeing who needs to sort of go, and then we're going to look at areas we can strengthen, and then players we'd like to sign to strengthen those areas. So that's how the next part's going to run. So looking at the goalkeepers, you've got Marshall, who's obviously the starter. You've got Macy, Dabrowski, and Mitchell. Uh, Macy, we're all in agreement that he should probably go. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dabrowski, what would you like to do with Dabrowski? Keep him around? Bench. Bench, bench, bench him, yeah. I would, keep, I would keep him around, yeah. I think he's, as I said, good development for him. And then Mitchell, do you think Mitchell's going to take that goalkeeping sort of role? I yeah. think he's in the back. And he's also good to have as this sort of, if, 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 if there's a horror event where for some unknown reason Marshall and Dabrowski both get injured, he's there, he's an option. Mm. And, you know, that, that's why it's always good to have three goalkeepers, because it can happen. You know, so, yeah, I, I definitely, yeah, I definitely keep Mitchell. If, if, if the necessity, if the necess- let me just have a stroke a minute. If the necessity comes, you can loan him out to like a League One or a League Two team. Right. And then, I think, I think for Mitchell as well, it's interesting to say keep him around to do the goalkeeping coaching, because I see that they're still actually advertising for that at the moment, so it doesn't seem like his name is maybe in the hat for that. Ad- that was just my that was on my personal opinion that I'd I'd, I'd have liked him to. I'd, uh, I'd get rid of him. Um, he's serving no purpose being here. He's not played. If he's doing the coaching job, great. But 
Nah, I think I'd rather use Murray Johnson as the third option. You know, a young keeper, development squad, give him a wee bit of experience. David Mitchell, 38, isn't he? He's in his late 30s. What what good's that having someone like what like I'd rather cut his wages off the books and get and maybe use it for another player, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's fair enough. I think my money goes I, I said this before is do you want to be taking him away for development squad games where they've obviously like they'll be because they'll be in the UEFA Youth League next season, which is like the, the mm-hmm. Youth Champions League. Do you want to be taking him away for games that he could potentially be just to sit on the bench or be the, around, the, so, the, the the question also arises: Do you want do you want the under eighteen? No, these two goalies on the bench anyway. No, like do you, really. do you want do you want younger players playing against men or do you want them playing against boys their own age? Like there, there's a two it's a two pronged question, and I think yeah. either either way I'm happy if we are you know if we have Mitchell great like we've got a third choice keeper if we need it if we use Murray Johnson great we've got a third choice keeper who's young. Who's who's a hot prospect? I think there's been teams down south linked with him, so you know either way, I think it's we need a third choice keeper, and if it's Mitchell, that's all right. If it's Murray Johnson, again, it's all right. Yeah, exactly. I think that's it. Spot on. Okay. Right, move on to the centre backs then. Hanlon. Get Enjoy. out my club. <laughs> I knew that was coming. There's a surprise. Get out yeah. my club. I think I think Hanlon would be a good squad player this year for me. I don't think he's a starter. I think I think he's sort of. Uh, edging on what Berra was at Hearts towards the end. Good. Um, and I think that was one of the things that um, who was the Harry Potter lover they had in charge. Uh, what was his name? Austin McPhee? No. No, McPhee. no Austin McPhee. Christ, he had the uh, Daniel Stendhal. You never see the Hearts documentary they had when they had the wee... The, oh, right. oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was the lucky golden <laughs> stit, uh, snitch guy. Uh, he came in and his big decision was to get rid of um, Berra. So I don't know if... Um, They'd be doing something similar with Hanlon, but I think I think he'll be a squad player next year. Um, no, four years. I think we'd all be in agreement to keep. Keep watches. Hundred percent. McGregor. Sell. Yeah. When they sell him. I'd. How? What? Again, it goes back to my question with David Mitchell. What purpose does it have having a thirty-seven-year-old player who's played five games this season on the on in and about the squad? Other than McGregor aside. Other than experience, what what does he offer to the squad? Calvin's man <laughs> aside. I, I base my I base my look off of him, apparently, but I football and wise he offers nothing. No, nah, very very much sentiment. I think I think he I think he played well in the last game of the season there. Like, ah, he, did. Well. he did. Yeah, in a game well. that like meant toss all. So <laughs> I think the I thing think is he's better than Hanlon. He was he did he do, and that's the thing is but the thing is for me with Gregor is if he played like that when he was young. Say, wait, say McGregor was younger, sorry, and he'd, I'd go, right, it's, let's rotate him in and give him a shot. For me, I'd loan McGregor out. He'd do a job for like a lowland league club or a league two club. I don't um, know if he'd be interested in a loan. I know he wouldn't be interested, but it, it, because I, I know it's just like, for me, I know he would, maybe wouldn't be interested in it, but I think it is an option on the table. I'd keep him around as well, maybe for a, to transition him into coaching. I know he's been doing a, some stuff like Leith Athletic and that as well, so, you know, uh, I, I think, think definitely I think having McGregor uh, around could be he, useful. His last club is Hibs, so if he leaves, he'll retire. If he stays, he'll be he'll be on the bench. I think his um, I think he sort of got a send off with the last game of the season last mm-hmm. uh, last game of the season just there against uh, was it K- County was it County? Aye, no, it was, St. Johnston. Uh, no, St Johnston. Sorry, <laughs> aye, I think I think that was kind of a send off for him to be honest with you. Uh, and then moving on to Del Ferrier. bench. Bench, yeah. I think the boy's got potential. I mean, he he's come for Belgium. He's standard Asia, a decent team. He's got yeah. a lot of hype around him. I think he is a very decent young player. Obviously, he's part of this development squad dealy. But I think if we need him, he's useful other in the squad and he's got potential. I'd put, I'd keep him on the bench. Like I don't, you know, he he had ten minutes at the end of the season there, so I'd probably play him in the league cup games as well. Like. But nah, he's he's not making the, he's not make he's not making the squad just now. Given our couple of years, I think. And then we've sort of got our left sided defenders. You've got Doig. Obviously, he's been linked with a couple of moves away, maybe to Belonga. Um, keep and, un- keep unless the money's right. I'd yeah, say. I, I think if the money's right, and I think if you're talking, I can see that Calvin Ramsey's maybe going for ten million. Do you know what I mean? So if he's ten million, what are you looking at Doig for? What, what, realistically. So I, I'd I'd say anything more than anything more than eight million sell him. Yeah, I I think you'd be lucky if you get five for them. If the I money's right. I think 
I think we'd, pro- we'd probably get more next season, to be honest. I think if we keep him and he plays in our great season like he's just done, then can I see why he can't he go for more than 10. Hindsight's yeah, yeah. a great thing, but it looks like it might have been worthwhile cashing in on him last season and using that money to even further sort of better the squad all over. But Aye, potentially. Podcast player of the year, Stevenson? Keep. Keep. Think. I think he's got another season in him. Because you look mm-hmm. at him, he was like a new man this season when he played. He's I'd still, uh, I'd transition that. him in, into that uh, impact sub player. I don't think well, he's... I think, yeah, definitely. I'd I think if, um, if 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 Doy goes, we need to buy a replacement. We can't rely on Stevenson for 38-plus games. No, I, I, that's it. No, but I definitely think that Stevenson keep... He's good to have around the squad as well. Mr. Hibbs, and I, like I said, he was like a new... He's, he's rolling back the years last season, so... I think you, you, I keep saying it any time we talk about things and put him in the, put him anywhere in the park he'd put in a shift. Mm-hmm. So that brings us on to uh, obviously you got Dimitri Mitchell as well. Strange one for me, Mitchell. Bit bit odd. He started he started decent. Got um, two two injuries. Yeah, he yeah. he looked all right. Two injuries. Um, looked exciting when he got on the ball. It looked like the only one that had an idea how to go forward actually. Probably uh, backwards or sideways. Probably keep him in, keep him in and around the squad. I wouldn't start him. Mm, I think he's a squad player for me too. Yeah, the decent squad player as well. He's not, he's mm-hmm. not a bad player by any stretch. I don't think we got to see enough of him. I think that's the thing for me. I don't really get to see enough of him to pass comment or go into, you know, really fight his corner. Aye. Yeah. No, he's, I, I, he's, I, I well. he's a decent player, and I think he does what he needs to do. Obviously, it's unfortunate his injuries and how we played at that point, how we start playing and everything like that. But yeah, I'd keep Demi Mitchell around. He's a decent enough player. I think we'll maybe see more of him next season as well, which will be good. And then, oh, Cadden will be our next one looking at the right, but so the right keep, back, keep. Cadden, keep. Clark, if we could, probably keep as well. Yeah. Keep. I, it's highly doubtful he'll stay, I think, but mm. cause, you know, a lot of people a lot of people saying, you know, the son, the what, Stoke City manager was watching him but folk thought he was a support us, but apparently he was watching Clark instead. So, you know, I think I can't see Clark staying, but if he is wanting to stay, I'd keep him. He's, he's a good player and he's about the only one that looked like he cared towards the end of the season, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I think I think he was pretty pretty athletic at getting back and forward and things like that, and he looked like a big threatening laddie. Um McGinn, obviously, we've already sort of covered Paul McGinn. He's going to be staying for a year, but uh, I don't know. I think, I think, I think McGinn's all right. I think he's a sort of good, good, op- good six, option six, on the bench. Seven every time he plays, he's, a, he's a good like, back. He's, the, he's there. And he, he's a good squad player, and he, when he does get put in, he does the job you need him to do. So for Aye. me, yeah, on the bench, I'd give him a life contract as well, just for what he said about uh, the referee being in it. <laughs> yeah. Aye, he can stay. He bring his brother. Call, I phone his brother. See what his brother John's doing. Too, if he wants to come. Um. So looking at the centre mids, Joe Newell. Keep I am not. I'm not his biggest fan. Um. I don't know what it is with Newell, but he created the most chances for Hibs last year. So he's most our most creative player with 38 chances created. So that's what almost a chance a game. So. It's kind of hard to see anything other but start him. Do you know what I mean? He, he's one of the players as well. Whenever I talk to my heart mate, my heart's mates or any other uh, fans of other teams, when they watch him, they always seem to think that Newell's a better player. Um, so maybe just maybe it's just because I'm such a Scott Allen fan. I think he's a too much. <laughs> no. uh, I think I'm blindsided with that one, guys. No, I'd I'd keep him, mate. I think he he offers us something that Doyle Hayes doesn't. I think he. I <laughs> well, I. Mean, I, I, I offer something to the team that doesn't. <laughs> so. Nah, Neil's Newell, one of my favourite players. There, eh? I think he likes. I think he likes putting the tackles in and getting the ball. And I know sometimes it's frustrating when he doesn't pass it forward. Doesn't he shoot? See if he can shoot. He'll not be at Hibs. Mark my words. If he gets a shot on him, he's leaving Hibs. But yeah. I'd keep. I've got to sort of echo what Charlie said. He's I really love him. Oh, he's I, top favourite oh, player, but. That, Mike. Yes. I think I think he would um I think he would walk into an English Championship team easily. Oh, yeah. I know. Well, but you did, you see when he played for Rotherham, like uh, uh, when he played for Rotherham, he had a shot on him and he was scoring some good goals, like seriously. So I think the thing is, like, so Newell's not obviously not my top favourite Hibs player, like, but I like him. He does a good job in midfield. I think arguably being our best midfielder this season, obviously McGinnis is on paper yeah, our best midfielder, yeah. but injured too much. 
Right, obviously, he's, he's missed ninety percent of the season. But I think. Oh. Charlie, the free advertisement with the tunes. <laughs> That's us getting a copyright strike now. No, but I think, um, yeah, Newell's a, Newell's a good player and he is our best midfielder. I think that was our best midfielder over the course of the season. So, yeah, he, he really, to me, I, I like him and he does a job. And like Charlie said, if he can just find that shot, I think we'd be getting more goal. We'd be getting a good few goals out of him as well. I um, mean, it's just, I feel sorry for him. His European football lasted all of a few minutes against Santa Coloma and then he was suspended because of that stupid Icelandic referee. But I, I definitely knew Newell is a good player and yeah. I called the Tamworth Purple for a reason. <laughs> I've got me honestly I'll send you a picture of boy I play five or sides with on Monday night. Spitting image of Joe Newell by the way. Actually He's a handsome image. table then. I, I call I, I call him the Tamworth Pearl as well and the guy looks at me I think he's got a clue what I'm what I'm on about like but I uh, Doyle Hayes Sell I, I'd, I'd yeah. punch him. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of Doyle Hayes. My, I'd, I'd get rid. I mean, I know, like, I, I, he's just. I don't think he offers much. I think we. You seen sometimes the player he was. Other teams, he doesn't have a. He doesn't have a forward pass in his locker. All he did for me, the, the only positive thing he did for me in Hampshire was scoring those two screamers against Ross County. There's, there's a reason he was at St Mirren. Yeah, mm. and it's like what you said, mate. Like, I know you bank this trunk a lot. If you sign St Mirren players, you get St Mirren results. And mm-hmm. I think the thing is, Jake Doyle is for me, is he's good at that level. To me, he's a bit like a Melker Halberg. He's good at a certain level. He was decent for St. Mary, came to us, was thrown in at the deep end a bit, didn't he? He's not done particularly well, and that's it. I'd sell him, and I could easily see him going to, like, say, a Livingston or a St. Johnston or back to St. Mary yeah. or something like that. Or even, like, he could even end up back over in Ireland, you know, was one of the sort of more well established clubs there, like Bohemians or something like that. So, I, I don't, or he could end up down south in League One of the Championship. So for mm. me, yeah, he's sell. I don't. Jake Doyle doesn't offer anything to the team for me. Yeah, unfortunately, he's, he's contracted to two, uh, 2025, so I think he will be with us. But for me, Excellent. <laughs> he's just someone that, I, like like you said there, Jack, he doesn't have a forward pass in his locker. For me, uh, I, I think the first time I seen him make a tackle all year was in the 0-0 uh, Edinburgh Derby home draw. Um, other than that, for me, he's been pretty non-existent other than his two his two wonder strikes that I did say at the time were sort of maybe papering over the cracks. Um, and yeah, I just, he, he does, doesn't do anything for me. It's a bit harsh, but I sometimes feel like he's play, playing with a man down. Uh, he's just, he, he, he's no, he's no, he, he, for me, we need if we need we need we need a good football player in there, like a pretty football player, someone who could do get the ball, pick out a pass, see a through ball, things like that. And we need a big sort of tough, ugly bastard in there as well, like a really really tough, tough guy. And he's not it for me. Uh, and I think he had plenty of opportunities last year to show us that he maybe was. And I don't think he, like I said, I know everybody played bad, but I think he didn't really show any any signs of being a. Just move on, eh? McGuinness. <laughs> sell. Sell. Oh. Right. Sell. Far, far, far too injury prone to be at Hibs. You don't give up. Well, I think he has a couple more years on his contract, doesn't he? Uh, um, that, all being well, all fine and well, mate, but if you can't, he, can't he stay fit, what's the point? That's true. He had, all this, had, all, had all this promise at the start of last season and hasn't been seen since. He was, he was one of our best players at the start of the season, obviously, the way. Go on, Jack. Play devil's advocate. I'm going to say that if if he can keep fit next season, he'll be one of our best players. So mm-hmm. simple as that. The ability he showed at the start... I mean, it's, it's telling that he was one of... up there with the top goal scorers when he was injured for 90% of the season. So mm-hmm. for me, I definitely think that McGuinness, we keep him if he can stay fit then I think he's going to be one of our best players next season. It's as simple as that. He's a good player. I like him. Hopefully, all the best to him. Hopefully, he can stay fit. Mm-hmm. Campbell? Loan. Loan. Oh, well, there he is. There he is. <laughs> fourth, uh, fourth unofficial member of the podcast, Stan of the Pug. I'd, um, um, I'd loan Josh Campbell out because I think it's unfair the criticism he gets. I think there's definitely... There's definitely. Well, a I don't think he like. It. I, no, I mean, I think he he got thrown in the deep end, didn't he? Like, obviously, if McGinnis was fit, Josh Campbell would be nowhere near that team. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, 
it's it's fair and it's unfair in the same remark. I think give him a give him a season on loan, then we'll see. But to be honest, I can't see him making it at Hibs mm-hmm. properly. You know what I mean? I think um, mm-hmm. I think he needs a time away for the club to try and get get back to where he was playing football before he jumped into the team. Yeah, I, I agree with Charlie. I think for me, Campbell alone, he a championship club or a League One club in Scotland. Mm-hmm. Will do him the world of good. Somebody like Airdrie or somebody like that, you know. I think I think a club like that would do him the world of good because he is a decent young player. Um, and I also think like I agree with Charlie. He's chucked in the deep end. You know, you you got a young lad just suddenly throw him in and say, "There you go, son. On you go." Usually, players like that are phased in. They're not just chucked in. And mm. I, for me, he proved that he could be a big game player, but he wasn't good enough in the. I think the one I picked out that was particularly irking for me was. The, the Mirren game is a misplaced pass him directly led to St Mirren's winner in that game um, the 1-0 at Easter Road you know so I think really for me Campbell he needs time away to develop and sort of work on his game a bit at a level where he's maybe not going to be scrutinised as much and I think like I said an Airdrie or a Wraith Rovers or a club like that will definitely do him the world of good Aye I think looking at his stats here as well he, he some of those teams you mentioned, I mean, he's already been on loan to Airdronians. He's on loan to Arbroath, and I didn't think he'd done particularly well at Arbroath either, um, from some of the Arbroath fans that I've spoken to. And then he was at Edinburgh City as well. So he's already played uh, 60, 69 games at that level. And, you know, do you think one more season down there would help him break into that Hibs team, or do you think we'd be best cut, cut, and, cut and ties with him? See, for me, when, when Campbell was at those clubs, they won how they are now, if you see what I mean. The Edinburgh City are quite good right now. You know, they've, they've, they've really sort of come on to hang with Alan Mabry. And Airdrie and Arbroath are both, I think Arbroath are punching well above their weight, you know, in terms of what they are as a club. But not in a bad way, I'd taste it. And Airdrie have really just, obviously, I know Murray's went and left them, but, you know, they, they were, they've become a completely different team from when Josh Campbell was actually there. So I think if you put him in and he had those sort of decent players that are established that level around him, that might help him. So I definitely think loaning him out is the best option because he's just he, he's going to be the scapegoat if he keeps getting his chances. And the thing is, Lee Johnson might decide, nah, I don't really like you, bench. Then it's just wasting a young talent. So I definitely think that a loan spell somewhere would do him the world of good. I think the reality for me is if you want to be third in the in the SPL and successful in Europe, I don't think Josh Campbell's the answer. No, no I don't. I, not. Like you're saying with other players, other players we've mentioned here as well. I can't remember who it was, but we're saying like, you know, uh, Jasper for example. You know, um, decent isn't good enough, and I don't think it, I don't I don't think if he goes on loan for a year or anything like that, um, I I don't think he'd start for Livingston. Being a man, I've never seen a better team than us because he finished higher than us the last three years. But I don't think uh, I don't think he start for teams like that. I think I think I I don't think he's good enough. I'd sell him personally. Um, right, I'm going to let you two start chatting about Henderson. Uh, probably the biggest disappointment um, at Hibs for me last year anyway. While I run and get my charger before it runs out, <laughs> so I'll leave it to you two. I'll be right back. Henderson for me, um, like I said on the tier maker, I think he needs to eat about a thousand calories more a day to bulk up. Um, I think there's definitely a player there. I like I like what I've seen in Henderson so far. I think um, you know he's obviously he's I think he's played all right. Like I don't think he's been overly overly great. I think, but I think there's definitely a player there. I think he's he obviously finally got his first goal for Hibs at St Mirren away. Um but no, I think, you know, you need you need a you need a better option than Henderson, I think. Yeah, hundred percent mate. I for me I'd keep him but I'd bench up or bench is what I mean. Like, you know, I think Aye. I, I definitely have him around on the bench. He's used to play hard, but like you said, he's no physical enough for me. And I think we need that. We need physicality. But we also need that we also need like more, more creativity as well. I think Henderson sometimes could lack that. Other times he had it. Something we need a player that's consistently creative. So for me, he's one that I keep on the bench. He's a useful player to have around as a bench player, like as a 
sub that he can bring on and maybe you know have a wee bit of an impact in a game. Aye, aye, that's me back. Uh, I was just going to say, I think um, he's been a disappointment for me because I thought he would have been the right person to come in. And sort of, sort of similar to his brother in a way, how good his brother was. I thought they might have been quite similar, but I think they've been quite different, actually. Uh, I've not been impressed with them. So, moving on again. Uh, moving on again. The next person... <laughs> <Stung spun, right? laughs> next, person <laughs> next person on our list is... a. Uh, Obviously, we've talked about Kenny. Uh, Dylan Tate? I'd, I'd probably put him on loan again. Although, to be fair, mm-hmm. is he going to make it a Hibs if he keeps going on loan? Probably not. So, I'm not sure if it's... Because it was definitely a Jack Ross sign and now we're two managers later and he's still not featured for Hibs. So, yeah. I'm not sure. I agree with that. I agree with that one. Uh, that brings us on to Mackay. Sell. I think I'd get rid of Dan Mackay. I mean... He's, he, he's a, he's a, I just think he'd be suited to another club. You know, for pro- me, probably be better going back to Kelly permanently. I would imagine. So yeah, that maybe even. I, that'd be a good team for, team for him because I think for me is, I, I still can't forgive him for what he did against Rijeka. <laughs> Um and also he's just to me he's just an a, an average player that's suited to that sort of level. He, he'd be suited to like Kilmarnock level for me. I think Kilmarnock this season they're going to be mid table. You know that I, I think that's where Kilmarnock is going to be. I think for me Dan McKay's a mid table player. We don't need mid table players, nor do we want mid table players. We want no. players that can challenge for third and fourth. Aye, I definitely think so. Um, I'm not not a fan of McKay at all. Um, so I'd probably get rid. And um, I think Calvin's having dog issues. So uh, I am having yes. Have you ever seen the show Dogs Behave? You ever seen the show Dogs Behaving Very Badly? Yes, <laughs> I have. He's standing like, behaving very badly. He's just wanting a walk. That's all it's from them. Um, brings us on to Young Bradley. Ah, not for me. I have not seen enough of him to be fair. I, I'll, like, what's the? I don't understand the point of having players like that if you're not going to play them. Like, yeah. we can't keep putting them on loan and on loan and on loan. Like, we need to either use them or let go of them, like Gullen. Yeah, I, I've, got agree, I've got to agree with that. I think he is a very sort of Jamie Gullen-like figure for me, where he's either going to, um, going to make it or he's just going to go on loan. And, and eventually with Gullen, it was just enough was enough. I think for yeah. me, Bradley's the same. I don't think he's ever going to get his opportunity. I think that that sort of time went, came and went, if you see what I mean. Because he was, he had that window where I think he was getting included in squads and everything. And then he just never got the chance. So for me, yeah, I'd, I'd probably sell him. And I think there'd be clubs that would take him. So yeah, for, for me, it's a sell. Hmm. Yeah, I don't don't know enough about him to be honest. Yeah, I don't think he'll be a hip, I don't think he'll be a hip starter anyway, uh, anytime soon. Right, Nisbet. Keep keep keep. Yep, he's our best striker. Doidge. Sell sell. I'd keep him. I think Doy. If I'd like to see how he gets on this year with his injury, uh, coming back for his injury and see what he can do. I think his hold-up playing that was really good before he left. just a yard off the pace now. I think he'd be suited to like a lower level, maybe going back down south or back to Wales, I think. I maybe, think maybe Doyle's yeah. his career's maybe done. Maybe, yeah. Maybe that injury's finished. I mean, obviously, Melkerson's going to be sticking around as well. Yeah. I think we're all in agreement about that. Bench, so, pro- bench probably, yeah. Yeah, I think it depends, though. Like, if Bo- I think Bojan could end up maybe usurping Melkerson as well. You know, just... I, maybe that's not what's going to happen, but I definitely I think Melkerson's going to either be on the bench or, you know, but I think this season's is make or break for Melkerson. You know, it, ha- it has to be. He's got he's to do well this season. Though. I think is sort you of think so? just looking bleak. I, 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 don't, I don't think we pay three hundred and twenty-five grand for a player and then punt him at the end of this year. There's no way. Well, I'm not saying we would. I'm just saying it might it might affect things for him in terms of what his place in the squad is. I but think uh, he's, he's tied in 2026. We've still oh, yeah, got a few. Yeah. He's going to go for a loan. That's what I'm saying. I think. I think. I think. We, what would happen is that he'd probably just end up getting continuously benched if he doesn't start like living up to some of that promise he had. And I, I think this season will be good for Melkerson. 
And mm. I think we will get the player out of him, but he needs to be make a break for him. He needs to sort of prove himself because he, he has a point to prove with a lot of supporters as well. Mm. I think I think a lot of the supporters, not not to sort of uh, go against what you're saying, but I think a lot of the supporters understand that he was probably hyped up uh, by the hot dog. To be fair, <laughs> however, I do think you know what the hot dog was saying was probably right. He probably did score a lot of goals in Norway, and he probably was quite a hot prospect. But just adapting to the Scottish game is really difficult. Mm-hmm. It is really difficult, and I think you see that with a lot of players, especially players like I always use the Paul Heffernan example, but Brown at Kilmarnock, Kami Hibbs, Shite. John Sutton at um, uh, Hearts, great at Motherwell, went to, went, went to uh, Hearts, shite, same way, Tony Watt, good for um, Celtic and that, wherever else he was, went to Hearts, shite, it's the same all the time, you know what I mean, so I think just being a hip striker as well, we've been really blessed with great strikers in the past, so it's kind of a difficult role for him to fill. It's, it's a big shoes to fill, and I think it's Hibs and Hearts, we're both sort of... Uh, if you like falling giants, you know, Hibs and Hearts are very successful in a, a certain era of football. And I think I think there's an expectation there that we are big we are big clubs, so there's that little bit more on you to succeed when you're the other, other thing for Belson, you've got to remember he's a young lad. I I'm I'm nine, I'm nineteen and all and I would never dream of moving country and like mm-hmm. trying to do a job in another country at, at such a young age. Because you've got to remember football's his job. So imagine, like for for argument's sake, for me, I suddenly move to Germany and start doing, you know, sports journalism or whatever. It's, it would be a big um, change to adapt to, and I think that's the problem. Is you've got to remember, he's a young lad that's moved away from his family. Everything he knows, the new country in Scottish football is a very tough game to adapt to. So I definitely think that's a part of it with Melkerson. So we're coming on to our last sort of. Two segments of the podcast. Based on the stats for last season. So last season, um, we had, like I said, the best defence outside the old firm. Um, however, on the, on the flip side to that, we had the eighth best attack in the league. So right at the bottom of the uh, the league in terms of our, our attack going forward. So I, th- I think it's quite clear um, where we need to sort of strengthen. So... Again, like I said earlier, Joe Newell with the most chances created in 48, our most creative player, and then the actual most assists or uh, chances that turned into goals was Scott Allen before. Um, and for Scott Allen to have four assists, it sort of shows that the amount of games he played last season was minimal, but for him to have, have four assists, it sort of shows that that link between the midfield and the strikers themselves is an area that I think we seriously, seriously need to need to strengthen. Uh, are you guys in the uh, like minded or are you thinking Yeah, I think midfield and midfield and sort of like attack like the the um the wide areas. Midfield and the wide areas and attack and, sh- and another striker wouldn't go amiss either, I don't think. I think we were very toothless in attack. We lacked any sort of creativity. Basically what is we need we need a midfield that could um kick mass if they're hurting my shirt tail basically. You know what I mean? You know, because yeah. a lot of them couldn't um, and I think that's the problem is we need we've got new if we've got a fit McGinn it's excellent but we need that other midfielder that's got a bit of flair to them that can sort of get things going as that football brain now again I know you shouldn't really compare men's and women's teams and like that, but the women's team have that you've got Shannon McGregor and Michaela McAloney you've got two of them in the men's team we don't really have that figure that can also that's got a goal in them as well now you can compare you can have something a lot of goals are coming from midfields you know like Shannon mm-hmm. McGregor was scoring a lot of goals Michaela McAloney was scoring a lot of goals so I think the thing is you need to have that goal scoring midfielder. So for me, that's a big one is get a goal scoring midfielder and strengthen the midfield in terms of having that element to it. And then attack, we just need players that are going to be able to score goals. It's as simple as that. I know it I know it sounds like really, really simplistic in that, but you need to you need to score goals to um, win football matches. It's and as simple who, as that. You need to you need to score more goals than the opposition. And I think for me, we lacked that. We were really toothless. And I think it proves that Boyle was a top goal scorer and he left um, during, the, during the winter window. So, and nobody managed to outscore him. And then James Scott got onto that list, even though he scored four goals right at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, and I see Charlie's left us again because he got fed up of listening to me. But, um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's it for me, really. Um, I, I definitely think those are the areas we need to strengthen in. Yeah, so l- looking at those areas, 
Let's hear a player. I'm thinking centre midfield. I think that's one of the places we need to strengthen in terms of like a creative player. Is there anybody that springs to mind that you'd like to? You'd there's like a player that I'd, I think there's a player that's getting been getting talked about um, recently. Sorry, I'm just on my phone here because I need to remember who he is, but uh, I need mm-hmm. to remember the boy's name. But uh, a player that's been talked about um, recently is I know he's a winger. I know we're talking about midfield, but a player I'm going to get linked with is Ronan Curtis from Portsmouth. He's also been capped by the Republic of Ireland as well. He's, mm. he's ripped up League One with Portsmouth, and obviously that's a league that Lee Johnson knows really well. Those are players that he knows really well in that sort of um, level at England. And I think we've had a lot of players that have come up and have been decent enough for us coming up to that level. Like Ronan Curtis, Republic of Ireland, it is, even though they're maybe not the team that they used to be as a nation or as a football nation, they, they still have a lot of good players. I think Ronan Curtis, it's a, it's a tough squad to get into the Ireland squad. They've, they've got mm-hmm. some quality there, and I think Ronan Curtis for me would be a really good signing because he has been exciting for Portsmouth. The Portsmouth are a top team in League One, and also they're a big club within English football as well. You've got to remember they're sort of like a fallen giant, Portsmouth. So for me, I definitely think Ronan Curtis would be an ideal signing. Another one is I think we do need an extra centre half. I didn't really mention it, but it's something that sort of just came into my head there. We do need another centre half, and definitely Overlay for Livingston. I, I like yeah, that's what I like too. I, I liked him. I really like, any time we, we played him, he, he just got in our players' faces and made it really difficult when we played Livingston. And we need that sort of big physical centre half that's not afraid to get stuck in there. But he also has a bit of speed and a bit of skill about him as well. So Obala is definitely a player I bring in. So I'd say my my two sort of top wish list transfers, one of them I don't think Obala will come perhaps, but Obala and Ronan Curtis are my two sort of um, main players. I'd also like to see McCart. I like McCart. And a free agent as well. I'd like to see McCart come in because he is. I think he'd have something to offer the squad as well. Um, but I'm not too sure with midfielders. There's not really any that I sort of know that would realistically come to Ibs. You know, I'm well, going to name some random second Bundesliga player that's just not got a chance of coming to this. So I'll keep stoop on that one. What about McGill? He's out of contract. He's happy for me. Eh? Well, sorry, Matt. My Skype's doing my heathen. What did you ask? Uh, I'll just send to you and Jack. What about Dylan McGeoch? I see that he's he's free this sort of transfer. Nah, there's a, there's a reason he's been released by Aberdeen, who finished lower than us in the league. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think I think something about yeah. So is Amali, like, Ronan, Ronan Curtis, Obalai, and McCart. And also, I take it, I take a punt on Aidan McGeady as well. To be fair, you know, and I think he's, he's, got, good he's got that experience and he we're linked with them, and I think. As much as I don't get every game because he is older, I think he would do a job for us. Mm-hmm. We're just going through areas that we th- feel like him should strengthen. Charlie, and we sort of identified the attacking centre mid role and strikers. Uh, is there anybody that comes to mind that you'd like him to sign? Uh, I think we need our centre back as well. Um, yeah. I'd take. I'd take. Who would I take? Jason Kerr. I'd go for him. Um, I think he's I think he's playing regularly for Wigan though. I'd break the bank, mate. I'd get him in. I think it would cost us a lot of money though. I I think the thing is is you've got to be realistic in a situation where is, is do we throw Dude. money at one player and risk him not being that great? Because you've got to remember it could be a massive punt to take. But I would take care's what I'd take, but I think the thing is is it's the how much we'd have to pay for him that's putting me off. I may break with our mate, we need to spend over a million on a player at least once in my lifetime. We've never done it. I'd say Jason Kerr, um, I take Obelai too. Um, yeah, I like Obelai too. He's a good player. I think he is a really good player, Obelai. Aidan McGeady for me. Connor Ronan that was at St Mirren, I'd take him. Uh, at Wolves, right. Hearts are linked to him, so hopefully we can get in there and get him. Um, I'd take that boy for Portsmouth that's linked today. I think he's decent. Um, and up front, Ross Stewart for Sunderland, I'd take him. Uh, he is a decent player, <laughs> yeah. I, I realise that's a big wish list, and not, probably none of them are going to come except McGee Day. But I think we need we need a big big window. Um, and yeah. I, th- I think I would have taken Charles Cook as well as an option. I don't think he was that great against us, but I'd have taken him as an option. But he's obviously about, um, Belgian. McCurdy, Harry McCurdy, uh, yes. thirty-five appearances. I think it's sorry, I forgot about him. Stephen Fletcher's another one that's been linked that I'd take, but yeah. Uh-huh. It's all hearsay, mate. Like until the scarves above their head, we'll never know. But um, nah, I've got. I want players that we're gonna have to spend money on to get because mm-hmm. Hibs have always been a club that's signed. Like Melkerson, 
is probably our biggest signing financial wise since James Collins, and that says oh, it. <laughs> so let's break the bank, let's pay a million pound, let's use the Martin Boyle money wisely, and let's get some players that are going to improve the squad. Yeah, because we're not shy and spending money on managers. Do you know what I mean? No, definitely not. <laughs> Well, I'm going to chuck out a couple names, just sort of at the um, couple names here for you, and tell me whether you think you'd take them at Hibs or not. So what about that Ian Harks for, for Dundee United? Yep. I'd take him. Yeah, good player. Mm-hmm. Get his wife to come and play for Hibs women as well, because she's a decent player. Aye, well, I see he's a free agent as well, so that's one that could potentially be on his way. Um, what about Karamoko Dembele? He seems to have fallen out of favourite mm-hmm. Celtic. I would. I would not. I think the thing is, is if we're no. talking about, if we're moaning about signing Bojang and then going and signing another sort of, I wouldn't say he's unproven, but at the same time, I just feel like Dembele, he'd be a bit of, he'd be too much of a risk for me because he's no really, he's not really done anything, he's not really achieved anything at like a top, 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 top level. And I, I think neither's half, neither, neither half the Hibs team though. Do you know what I mean? The, the thing, but the thing is for me with youth players is that. I, You've got to look at it and go, and whether it's at an under-21 or whether it's in like, like Bojang in his own league in Gambia, have they done it? And I just think for me, like Dembele, I think it would be too much of a risk. And I just have a nasty, nasty feeling Dembele, Dembele would be one of these ones that just turns into a, a flop, if you see I'm, what I mean. Is, I'm, not sure if you, I'm not sure if you count it. Potentially not, but surely his league winner medals at Celtic go towards something, though. Although he never played much games. like he, I, I'm sure he played like at least one or two this season, but... That mm. I, I would say that that merits it, but obviously you're right, Jack. He's not he's not played consistently for Celtic, but, but he had opportunities for Celtic. Celtic. The, Celtic looking over the last couple of years as well, though they've been going for ten in a row. Have they really had the chance to give youth a you know youth a shot? No. The, the thing is, is that's what happens at these big clubs. Though, but the, the thing is, the other thing that puts me over is, is he wasn't consistent enough for Celtic to be. He'd put in, he'd be fantastic one week and then you come up and if he's struggling against teams like civil service strollers and that do you really want him around the Hibs team no so I think for me it would be too much of a risk but uh, and also like he was really bad and that's the thing I was going to try to say is like he was at the game at um, Celtic Park when Rangers B and Celtic B played each other in the B old fun I know there's a load of B's in the old fun but you know what I mean you know I, I think the thing is is he wasn't that great in that game so if he can't really get himself up for like what's a big, and I know it's B teams, but still that's like the old firm. If he can't really get himself for that, a game like that, it's just I think he's got a lot of attitude. From what I've heard to Celtic fans, I know he's got a lot of attitude problems as well. So you didn't really want that around the squad. Well, that's fair enough. So that's sort of. Uh, you've got any other names to throw on the table before we wrap this one up, then? Ronaldo would be nice. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Too old. Well, that brings us to the end of the um, our rebuilding Hibs. Sort of went through the squad, uh, looked at who sticks about, who we think should go, how do we look at players we'd like to sign or think areas we need to strengthen, a few stats and figures in there. So hopefully you've enjoyed that episode. One thing I'd like to ask you to do, we're trying to get to 1,200 uh, followers on Twitter. So if you can give us a follow, if you haven't already, please make your way there and do that. Also, <laughs> Subscribe to us on YouTube as well and get, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and like it because that just helps out with algorithms and that. And to be fair, we get quite a lot of chat on the uh, on the old YouTube, which is really good. So please keep that up and make sure you subscribe. Um, and until next time, uh, you can also contact us on Twitter just before I close up uh, and let us know, know who you think Hibs should sign uh, and which areas we need to strengthen. Let us know if there's a player at Hibs that's currently there that you think we should be letting go. Um, then let us know. But until next time, I'm on the Hibs.